The point of this final video in this series is to show you how to actually finally file your non-provisional utility patent application with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So firstly, you need to go to the uh, Patent Rights Restored homepage where we show here. Go to Links and the very first link at the top left Portal for Unregistered Electronic Filer. This is the portal to file your application and filing papers as an unregistered filer. Click this guy and it takes you to the United States Patent and Trademark Office portal. Now this, this um, demonstration is actually connected to the USPTO, although we're not going to finally file this uh, example case. So here we are at the portal and you have your papers um, ready to file so the first thing you do is put in your last name I think it's Doe your name is John Doe e-filer first name is John e-filer email address let's assume it is john at sbcglobal.net now we are asked to uh, select whether this is an existing application or a new application we're filing a new application when we select that we get a list of uh, selections for the type of application or proceeding that we wish to file. We're going to file a utility patent application. And this is a non-provisional application under 35 U.S.C. 111A. You don't need to know what that is, but we are filing a non-provisional patent application. Following on down is not an existing application so we've got we've selected everything we need to here and we click on continue now application data we need a title of the invention uh, you know what your title is it'll be the same title that's on your specification we're going to call this one John Doe Doe's machine Attorney docket number we do not need because you're filing on your own behalf. The first name inventor is you, John Doe. Sorry about that. First name, middle name, John Michael Doe. So middle name is Michael, last name is Doe. And then we come on down and said enter a customer number for correspondence or provide an address. Well, you're not, uh, nobody's filing for you and you need to put in a correspondence address. So all correspondence from the patent office will go to you. So click on correspondence address, John. John Michael Doe, street address. 2222 Doe Street City Everywhere State Well, I live in California. I like California. Let's say everywhere is in California. That's in the United States. Postal code. I'll make one up. Telephone number Make one up the email address we used before was what was it? the email address was uh, John at SBC global dot net now remember you're putting in all of your own information 
in this. This is just an example that I'm doing to show you how it's done and where everything goes. Uh, that's everything that we need to put in here. We hit continue. Now this is the interesting part. We're going to attach all of our documents for our specification and our patent application. So here's the application data. John Doe's machine. First named inventor is John Michael Doe. Here's the address and so forth. All the stuff we've put in thus far. And now we have files to be submitted. Now if you've done the job that I suggested, uh, you have your files as um, pure image PDF files that have been scanned to PDF. You have a specification. You have uh, drawings that have all the drawings in one PDF document. You have a micro entity form if you are filing as a micro entity. And you have a declaration that's been signed and scanned to PDF. So we're going to enter those files. So firstly we say browse and we may have to um, to do a little more browsing than this but uh, I already had this uh, set up to come up with the file uh, called scan docs that uh, I have on the desktop for this demonstration so we're going to add our specification we say open so it tells us specification PDF now under view all categories this is an application part so we need to, to click that and then over here the document description is come on down a little bit and we'll find specification now there is a specification not in English your specifications in English go click specification so there's our first document specification it's an application part and is a specification does it contain multiple documents no add a file we've got four files that we want to put in so the second file we say browse it's going to be our drawings so it says drawings application uh, still an application part and over here a little more description drawings only black and white line drawings other than black and white well this is the one we want black and white line drawings so we have two of our four uh, the, the, this is also not multiple documents we add a file we browse again we click on declaration open the declaration is not an application part but a amendment to, 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 to let's see maybe it is yeah let's say that's an application part just add us I think it is do we have oath or declaration over here I think we do there we go oath or declaration file so the declaration itself is an application part uh, we select oath or declaration filed. We have one more, which is the micro entity form. So we add a file. We browse. We open the micro entity form that's in the uh, scan folder on our desktop. Micro entity. And we, here, this is entity status correspondence. It's not an application part. Entity status correspondence micro entity form and over here it's going to tell us entitlement to small entity no uh, certification micro entity education basis no certification micro entity gross income basis that's what it is so we, there's our four files we don't need to add any more files we don't have any more files so what we want to do is upload and validate and when we click this upload and validate the uh, portal, the USPTO portal, is going to look at the documents that we have prepared and tell us whether they're suitable um, for a patent application. So here we go, 17%, 100%. Upload validation. Here's our data. Here are our four files. Pass, 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 pass. It worked. 
all four of our files are good no validation errors were found and we have no more files to attach so we click on continue and we get to the fee um, portion where we determine the fees that have to be paid with the patent application now here we're going to select regular undiscounted small entity or micro entity if you're a micro entity at least for this demonstration you are and I'm expecting that most people who file this way or use this system uh, will wish to file as a micro entity so we have filed uh, we have uploaded the micro entity form so we click on micro entity and the page changes to show us the fees that are required for a micro entity so we want to pay the filing fee the search fee and the examination fee these are the three parts of the application fee so we click all three of those so we select the boxes for those three um, application size was this filed in paper it was not um, the number of pages uh, if it was filed in paper we don't need to fill out um, claims in excess of 20 I'm assuming you didn't write more than 20 claims if you did if you have more than 20 claims uh, say 25 then you have to put five here and pay an extra hundred dollars independent claims in excess of three I'm assuming you didn't have but if you have four independent claims you would put one here pay another hundred and five dollars uh, we don't have that for this uh, if you are writing multiple dependent claims which I hope you're not and I didn't show you how to do you have to also put that number in here and you would get a subtotal but we're not doing any of that uh, miscellaneous fees non-english translation thirty five dollars we don't have it publication fee we're not paying any of that subtotal etc so we want to calculate the fees we filled out everything we need to fill out calculate bingo telling us our total fees due are four hundred dollars this is normal for a micro entity with uh, no more than 20 claims no more than three independent claims and no extra pages etc so our filing fee is four hundred dollars um, and we can continue and now that we have our fees are all of our um, data uh, the um, documents that we uploaded and we are at the point that we can submit we're done we can submit our patent application and then pay our fees but we're not going to click on submit at this point because as I told you for this demonstration I'm actually connected to the USPTO and if I hit submit I've submitted this uh, this uh, patent application that I've prepared as a simple example it's not a real patent application so now that we've hit the submit button let's assume that we've hit the submit button we are at the position um, after we've calculated the fees of confirm and submit and it tells us congratulations you're ready to pay the fees associated with your submission the following identification numbers are associated with your submission because we submitted we have been given an application number which will be 14 slash something this is just an example of an application number a confirmation number and an EFS ID number so those will be your numbers it tells you the total fees that were calculated here it says nine hundred and ten dollars ours are actually four hundred and yours will be four hundred if you actually fit uh, the assumptions that I made so at this point we decide yes I want to pay fees now or no I will pay later additional charges may be incurred actually additional charges will be incurred if you don't pay the fees now so let's select yes I want to pay now and we go to the pay fees page again it gives us back the application uh, data for which we're paying fees um, the following fees will be collected for this application it tells us here that the total is nine hundred dollars of course in in our actual case it's four hundred um, this is just an example of how it works select method of payment you can charge a USPTO deposit account um, 
your registered practitioners have those, you don't. Charge a credit card or an electronic funds transfer. Let's assume you're going to pay by credit card. Most people will. So we say credit card and we hit the uh, navigation simulation and we see uh, very much like buying something online. I'm paying with American Express, Discover, MasterCard, Visa, whatever. Put in your credit card information, expiration, cardholder's name, the uh, security code, your billing address, just as if you were you're buying a bale of hay online, whatever. Um, and then you hit the navigation simulation again. Um, actually, you would be clicking on confirm charge information for this credit card transaction. If you were to do that, this is what you would say next. You're about to pay, in our case, it would be $400. Uh, the card type ending with and so on and so forth. And you can select yes, charge this credit card now. And if you did, what would happen would be that you would get an acknowledgement receipt. The USPTO has received your submission. We're at the receipt stage. The fee has been paid, your confirmation number, and you get e-filed application information, your EFS ID, your application number, your confirmation number, all of the data. And you can take the following actions. You can print the receipt. And if your computer is connected to printer, this will print it. You can save the receipt on your desktop or at any place in any database you're connected to. You can go back to file another application and so forth. So you'll very, at the very least, you'll want to save the receipt. Uh, you can always print it later. And here are the application details, the submitted files, and so forth. And that is the end of the process. At this point, uh, once you've um, printed your receipt, uh, you have your um, you have your application number, the filing date, and everything else. So your application is filed. Congratulations.